Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're gonna to be doing a video featuring a few of my favorite products, from primer to paint to top coat. So let's go ahead and get started. I like to mention on all of my videos is my membership group. I have a membership group called The Barnyard. The Barnyard is a group, well, instead of just standing here talking to you about it, I'll just list all the benefits here. And if you're interested in joining, you can go here. Next, we have the Eclipse Stain Blocking Primer. And this one I'm showcasing in both colors that it comes in, white for light colors and gray for the dark colors. Again, this is a water-based, low VOC product, so this can be used in a sprayer, has easy cleanup for brushes and this sprayers. This primer is great because it acts like an oil-based primer, but it's water-based. So it's much safer for you to use and like I said, easy cleanup. Works to this primer, in my opinion, it dries down incredibly buttery smooth, which with sun primers, it doesn't, especially stain blocker primers. This one though, I have not had to sand in between coats. Now you can if necessary, but I have not had to. This is an excellent stain blocker. When you're working with wood that is cherry, mahogany, red oak, even golden oak can bleed. And I'll go ahead and pop those up here on the screen as well. Those are known bleeders. That's when you're gonna wanna use the stain blocking primer. So let's go on over to my workbench get this loaded up in my sprayer and so get We are started. over at my workbench now and I'm gonna go ahead and put the primer into my spray cup. I'll show you how I go ahead and do that. As well, I'm gonna be brushing a section of the piece so that you can see how well this brushes if you don't spray. For that, we're gonna use my two inch angled zebra brush. I picked my color today of the piece, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the gray primer because that color is a little bit of a deep dark tone and I don't want white primer underneath it. That's what makes this so great that it comes in gray and white. This is a brand new primer, just took the lid off. And I would suggest going ahead and giving it a stir, a good stir, just to make sure you get all of the primer mixed up well. Um, also, just as a side note, you can thin this if you need to. So if you are spraying and you realize it is a little too thick, which I don't think the consistency is too terribly thick, but if it is, you're more than welcome to give this a little bit of dilution with water. I am going to go ahead and dilute this a little bit. I have worked with this product several times already. For my sprayer, it needs a little bit of dilution. Now, that's why I have this here on my workbench. This actually is not Crystal Geyser water. I'm recycling. This is distilled water, and that's what I would recommend using anytime you're gonna go ahead and thin. And I usually, I'm eyeballing this, but I know because I've done it so often how much to put in. I would start with a tablespoon or two. The key when brushing on your primer is not to load your brush up too heavily. As you can see here, I don't have a lot of product on my brush. I will go back in and add more product to continue with my brushing. Okay, so this is all dried down, and I have to tell you, the texture, well, there is none. It's super duper smooth. I'm gonna go in with my second coat, and as I mentioned earlier, you do not have to sand in between coats with this, this primer. This is our brushed side that I've done just a section. This is two coats. Look at that coverage. There is no bleed through, no peek through coming in, and there is no brush strokes. Completely smooth. And here we are on the second side, the other side that I sprayed. It came out really nice. That is one coat. I will do two coats for this. I am painting it a dark color, but it can still bleed through. And that's why we're priming with the stain blocker. But there's a couple of areas that still have. I'll get in close so you can see a little bit of that bleed through peeking through. So we're going to go ahead and let this dry and then we'll recoat. In just While a little this bit. is drying, I went ahead and applied my second coat off camera. I'll show you that as soon as it's dry. While that's drying though, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my brush. I'm going to use, don't mind the label, I left it outside. <laughs> I have an exterior sink and I left it outside so the sun faded the label. But this is the Lily Moon Conditioning Brush Soap. It is amazing. I cannot say enough good things about this. It is one of my favorite products in their line. If you haven't tried this yet, you need to. So let's go wash this out. I'll show you how easy the cleanup is. And just like that, primer coming out of a brush is amazing. Believe me when I tell you, I've used a lot of primers in my day. This one is not only one of the best for its job, but easy cleanup as well. 
My brush is now clean, conditioned, and ready for its next job. Here we job. are, two coats of the Stain Blocker Primer in the gray. This is ready to go. This is all done. It is smooth as could be and ready for our next step, which is paint. So here we are, all finished. This is two coats. That's all I need to do with this one. This primer is that good that it blocked mahogany with two coats. Now, what I will tell you is it is dry to the touch in 30 minutes. Recoat time is one hour, two hours for heavy stains. So if you've got some real bad bleed through and heavy stains, let it sit for at least two hours before you go ahead and recoat. Now, if you go ahead and recoat and you're still seeing that bleed through, because it's a real bad one, then what I suggest you do and what Lily Moon says is a good idea, let it sit overnight. The longer you let that piece sit and it work its magic, the better off you are. So you can come back the next day and put on a third coat. Again, that's for real heavy bleeders. Have I done it? Yes, I have. I had a mahogany piece that I recently did and I used the white primer because I was painting it white. I let it sit overnight, came back the next day, hit it with my third and final coat and I was good to go. two coats. This is the Lily Moon Mineral Paint in Foliage. I want to show you up close just how beautiful of a finish that puts out. This is not top coated yet. We're going to wait till tomorrow to go ahead and top coat it and it does not need a top coat. Just so you know, this product is durable enough to stand alone on its own without a top coat. I personally want to give it a top coat for just a little extra added sheen and more durability. So we'll do that tomorrow. We'll come back and I'll show you how I go ahead and do this. This is what we're gonna be using today. This is the Lily Moon Stellar Shield non-yellowing water-based top coat. So it can go really nicely in your sprayer with easy cleanup or it brushes beautifully. coat of the top coat. I'm trying to get a really nice angle and good lighting so you can see the sheen. It is just slightly like an eggshell finish so it just adds that little teeny tiny extra bit makes it a little more wipeable and a little more durable. Thank you so much for joining me today for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you for being subscribers. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell so you're notified when all of my latest videos are released. Being a subscriber to my channel helps keep me supported and keep me going. If you have any positive comments or questions, make sure you leave them down below. I love engaging with you and I'll always answer your questions. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next video.